Conversations with Indie Artists. Hello and welcome to another captivating episode of the Zarlaquan Podcast. I'm your host, Brittany Starr, and today we have a wonderfully talented artist, artist joining us today, James Buckman. He's the poetic wordsmith, the charismatic actor, and the dynamic vocalist of the galaxy's sparkliest rock band, Hot Apollo. I'm telling you, when I first heard their music, I was getting some serious young Bowie vibes, or even L.A. circa the 1990s. Um, please give a warm welcome to the one and only James Buckman. Hey, thank you. Um, I'm actually curious now. I don't know what was happening in L.A. in the 1990s, so if you have recommendations, I am here for them. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Was Bowie one of your inspirations? Um, Not like in any particular way, but I do, like, he is, he is an artist I've enjoyed a lot of the work of, specifically the first, like, half of his career, I would say. I, I don't know much he did after, like, the early 80s, but, like, the whole, like, glam era and the sort of, like, early 80s, like, romantic, like, dance pop kind of thing, I was into that. Tell us a little bit, what got you into music? There were two things I was, uh, quite certain of from an early age. I had a knack for writing, specifically poetry, lyrics, that kind of thing. Um, and I always loved performing. Like I, from like almost as early as I can remember, like I was in like all the like theater camps and like drama classes, like were my favorites in, in like grade school, that kind of thing. So I would always like, you know, perform like in, in any way I could, wherever I could, to the point where uh, in periods where I didn't have any sort of actual directed healthy outlet. Uh, I would do stupid stuff like jump in on my desk in class and bursting into song. Um, so I just, I always had like that, that energy and I needed to do something with it. And around like middle school kind of age, a lot of my friends who played instruments were starting their bands. And I thought, all right, this would be good for me. I should get in on that. Um, but they, no one liked my voice. Uh, so they didn't want to let me sing. They loved my lyrics. And they said, you know what? We know you have a drum kit at your house. You're not a good drummer, but you can keep beat. So why don't you drum for us? And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, use our lyrics too. And I thought, you know, any, any way to like perform and also get my words out there? Sure, why not? But eventually I realized I, I just, I don't want to be a drummer. I'm not a drummer. I've met drummers. I have an awesome drummer in my band. You can tell when someone is like made for an instrument and their soul's in it. And I don't want to be a part of music where the soul's not in it. And the way to get my soul in it was to, you know, be out front, jump around like a maniac, and uh, just being loud with my voice. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty stubborn for, for good and ill, and I dedicated myself to it, and I developed my voice to a point where it works. Um, and so that was basically my musical journey, and since then I, uh, I've just been set on it. So you write all the songs for the band? Uh, all the lyrics and like the music's a more collaborative process. I can play like just enough of guitar and piano to like, you know, construct like a rock and roll riff, but uh, like the actual instrumentalists in the band are complete virtuosos. Um, so that's the, the actual like, like musical part of it is, is much more collaborative. And I want to give it up to, to them in, in particular because uh, yeah, the, the musicians in Hot Apollo are just incredible. Hot Apollo is described as the sparkliest rock and roll band in the galaxy. Where did that come about? Uh, it just felt true and it sounded good. And those are like the two best things, you know, as a poet, you know, truth is beauty, beauty, truth. Absolutely. And if you make a slogan out of that, let's go for it. I think we're, if, if you're a fan of uh, just like any kind of rock music, I'd say we're quite accessible, but we do have our own spin on it. Like we, we take it in directions that, that would be new to you, but still familiar enough to like, uh, there uh, are like a lot of things. It can be a sort of comfort for people. And I think if you're looking to feel the way you did about maybe some of the music that spoke to you when you're first getting into it, but brings a fresh uh, iteration on that, I'd say we're good for that. But also like I've had, I've been playing at shows and like people will wander into the street because they'll, hear us outside and like some of them have don't even like listen to like anything remotely in the rock genre 
Um, they're like, you know, fans of hip hop or like maybe dance music or whatever, um, but they can still get into our stuff. So I'd, I'd say we do have that sort of uh, crossover um, angle that uh, furthers that uniquity. Can you talk to us about what it feels like to be on stage in front of a lot of people? Just being on stage in any scenario is just my favorite feeling in the world. Performing like it is a high unlike any other. And uh, that's part of what makes me so resolute that this is my path in life. Uh, just I cannot give it up. Um, but uh, like, I mean, I, I played, you know, like smaller shows, bigger shows. But even at some of the smaller ones, people like even at like you know the tiniest dive bar, people have told me like, oh, uh, I, I know this is, a, is like you know like a twenty foot bar or whatever, but like you you have the energy as though you're playing to a stadium. Um, so yeah, just performing in general, regardless of the crowd size, is just uh, the most transcendent experience for me. Um, I have this sort of brain where uh, I'm always living at several different times. You know, I can be in the moment. But I'm also in other moments too. And I would say performing is like the one time where I'm closest to just being singularly in the present and nowhere else. You shared with me a wonderful video that you guys made, the original work by Hot Apollo. Can you explain this video that uh, the audience is going to see, please? I tried to share two of them actually, but uh, I think one just might have been too potent for the internet to deal with um the, the email tubes or whatever uh so the one that made it through was working on love which is uh sort of a like wonderful like romantic dance track in the sort of uh vague tradition of like a kind of 80s new wave kind of like club vibes um but with the kind of like uh rock guitar edge underneath it all so it's called Working on Love, and it is the second single from our first album.
Well, that, my friends, brings us to the end of another enlightening episode of the Zarlaquan podcast. A heartfelt thank you to our guest today, James Buckman from Hot Apollo, for sharing his artistic journey and insights with us. Remember to stay inspired and keep nurturing your creative souls. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends so you don't miss a beat. I'm your host, Brittany Starr, and until next time, stay magical, my friends. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening episode of the Zarlaquan podcast. Remember to subscribe to our newsletter so you never miss a beat. 